The first one we're going to do is spattering or drops. So what I'd like you to use is a half a sheet of paper. If you don't want to use a half sheet, you could use a quarter sheet or two pieces, but it's nice to have it all on one sheet. What I did was I took tape, I taped all around the edges, and then I did two pieces of tape down this way. So we have 12 total different little areas to play with textures. And I, I, I like people to do their areas big enough so you get to have the room to play with these textures and experiment with them. When you're doing this, have fun with colors. You know, do whatever you want, little hearts, little flowers, shapes, trees, whatever you want to paint if you want to paint something. But do have fun with this. This is great. I always say it's like being a kid. So the first one we're going to do is spattering. Keep an old toothbrush. When I talked about supplies, it's great to have an old toothbrush on hand because you never know when you are doing sand, and I'll talk about when you'd be using these textures. What I do is wet the toothbrush, come in, tap, tap, and I'll come in, let's do purple. Let's have fun today with purple. So I'm gonna load up like a paintbrush. I'm loading up, getting that really nice with a lot of pigment. Now, with spattering, <laughs> let's say I don't want it to go all over. So what do I need to do? I need to protect the areas that I don't want these spatters to go. So I want it only in that area. So I take that area and protect it. I take my finger and put it right at the tip of the toothbrush and I flick it. I'm actually pushing my finger down and I get this beautiful, fun texture. Very fine. You can come higher up, closer down, somewhere in between. Experiment with it. See how it works for you. You can come in, clean your toothbrush and come in and grab another color. Yeah, you do get your hands a little dirty too. That's okay. So here I'm going to come in with another color and I can layer that. I can come back over that. Isn't that pretty? When would I use this texture? Well, abstract. I can use it for sand, for beach, pebbles. I can use it, I always said if I was doing a robin's egg and I wanted some little speckles on the robin's egg, I could do that. If you were painting a, a banana or an apple that has some little brown spots on it, you can come in and do that. It's endless. And I'll show you the other one. So this is with a toothbrush. Now I'm gonna show you just coming in with a brush, a paintbrush, and you hold your finger straight, and then you come in and you s spatter. So this is fun. I will always do this on the beach, very lightly for texture, for just some interest in the sand so it's not completely flat, um, but it's, it's a wonderful technique, okay? So spattering, using a toothbrush, or using a paintbrush and you can go higher or lower but do remember if you don't protect things it does go all over. Okay the next one is scraping. Uh, very fun as well. So you put the color down first whatever color you want and let's put down a couple different colors. So I'm putting down some rose matter and I'm going to put down some brown as well. And I just fill in that space. Ah, heck, I may even add a third color. So I've got some color down there. You can take a palette knife, and this is called scraping. So I just come in and you scrape any shape you want. If you go push down really hard, you get, you're actually bruising the paper and you're getting the paint to come into the scrape and it darkens it. If you push the paint, you get, you're pushing the paint away and you get a, a lighter texture. So using a palette knife is great. I put my finger right at the end and I'm actually pushing the paint away. 
but really cool. I love to do rocks. I'll do when I show you how to do rocks, we'll do that. An old fence. It's great for doing trees as well. When you're doing uh, some little trees in a in a landscape. So that is scraping. You can also, some of these brushes, a lot of the brushes will have this little wedge on and that you can scrape with as well. A really cool technique. Also, one other way is you can have a room key or, uh, or one of the grocery stores. They, they give you the plastic cards. You can cut those up and scrape with those as well. So that is scraping. The next one I'm going to show you is saran wrap. Saran wrap is, is fun and that is a wonderful technique as well to use. I use it a lot in abstracts when I'm doing abstracts. So I'm going to come in with any color you want and I'm going to paint my area. And like I said, when you're doing this I'm going to do three of them and then you go do three of them because we, you need to just kind of break it up a little bit. It's a, it's a lot and it's best if you do them in sections. So I will pause after I do three. So this one is timing. You have to get that saran wrap on that. So you cut a piece of saran wrap. Of course, I got this from Costco. It will last me till the day I die, probably. <laughs> but anyway, saran wrap, carry. You can carry a few pieces in your travel bag or in your art supply and supplies, and it's great. So you just cut a little piece, and then you push it down right when it's wet, and you push it right down into the paint. Now, can you manipulate it a little bit? Sure, I can play around with it but it's best if you just kind of crunch it up and then let it sit. I do know some people will put something on it. It's really not necessary. Just push it down and you have to let it, let it dry before you pull it up. So that's going to be saran wrap. Really cool for underwater scenes. People will, I do them in abstracts a lot. It's just a, on rocks. It almost looks like broken glass. That's that's our texture with the saran wrap. 